guys, this is a continuation from the previous video. So if you haven't watched that, it's basically a tutorial on how to use Unity's new input system. But if you already have that set up, then feel free to continue with this video. In this video, I'll explain how to make a simple 2D player controller with movement and jumping. And so now we actually have to move the player. So first I want to have a reference to the current position the player is at. So Unity works off of a Cartesian plane, so it has three dimensions. So Unity has a vector three that we can use to get that position. So we're going to make a variable of type vector three, and we're going to call it current position. And I'm going to equal it to the transform dot position. And the transform position is, so if we go back to the Unity editor and we click on any object, each object has a transform and that basically describes its position in the space. And all we're doing here is we're calling that transform of this, of the current game object the script is attached to and we're getting its position. And then we are going to change the X value. So going left and right. So we're going to say current position dot X and we're going to add on to it the movement input times a speed that we're going to declare later. And we're going to times it by time dot delta time. Basically, we're adding on to our X position the movement input. So if it's negative, it will add on that negative value. So it will move to the left. If it's positive, it will add in that positive value. So it will move more to the right. And then we're timing it by a speed that we're going to declare right now. And then we're also timing it by time dot delta time. So why do we use time dot delta time? It basically tells us how much time has passed since the last frame. And if we don't put this in our line, then our character will go flying off so quickly because frames are really quick. So if we call this function on every frame, it'll be called maybe 90 times in one second. And if you have a high speed, that's just going to go flying off the map. And time dot delta time is a very small number, which lets us make sure that our movement speed is the same regardless of the frame rate. All right, so now we need to actually declare the speed. So we're going to go up here and we're going to declare a speed variable. So private float speed. And right, since we're here, we're just going to declare a jump speed. We want to be able to edit these in the editor. So in the editor, we can actually edit values as you can see here, but we also want to make it private so other classes don't access it. And so there's actually a really simple way to do this. We just add in front of this uh, the brackets and we say serialize field. And so this allows us to change it in the Unity editor itself. Cool, so now we have our speed so it doesn't throw an error anymore. And now what we want to do is actually assign this new position to our current position. So we go transform dot position equals current position. And if you try to change a transform dot position dot X by itself, it will not let you, you have to do this format. You have to get the current position and then you have to add on to it and then you have to assign it back. Cool. So now we are going to minimize this. We're going to go back to the editor and before I actually make a player, I want to, in the hierarchy, I want to right click, create empty, and I'm going to call it environment. And you can change the name by pressing F2 as well. And so I'm going to get all of these. I'm going to shift click all of these environment objects, and I'm just going to drag it under this environment game object. So it's just to tidy up the hierarchy a bit. So now let's add a simple cube for our game object. So I'm going to add a cube right here. So this is going to be our player. And I'm just going to set it right here where the ground is. And as you can see, our cube has the components on our side. And in the bottom, we're going to add a component and we're going to type player controller. And I'm just going to move it to the top so you guys can see it better. All right. So now, as you can see, we have our speed here and we can change it. I'm going to press two and see how that works out. And one quick thing that I want to do is I want to disable this box collider. Since we're in 2D mode, I'm going to add in a box collider 2D. We have to erase the previous one by right clicking and remove component. So we go add component box collider 2D. And as you can see, it's just a 2D box collider. So if we go into 3D mode, 
That's our 3D cube, and that little green line is our collider. So we actually want to add a collider to our floor as well. So all we have to do for that is go to the grid object, then tile map, and then we're going to add component and we're going to add a tile map collider. And so Unity graciously already computes the collider for us once we add it in. So when we press play, we can move our game object to the side. As you can see there in the scene view. And if you go to the cube, which is our player character, and we increase the speed to four, then we can go faster. And the reason why it's not showing up here in the game, it's because it's currently behind the map. So if we actually change the position forwards, then we can actually see it on the map. But if you make any change while you're in play mode, it will not be saved. So be careful about that. If you want to save a certain component that you altered, then all you have to do is go to that component, press copy component, and when you press play, you'll see all your data is turned back to before the play mode. And so all you have to do is right click and then paste component values and you can see it ch changes those values with the ones that you wanted. So I'm just going to move the cube a little bit forward so we can see it on the map. And you do that just by dragging forwards. All right. So now we have the movement done. Now I want to add a jump. So to do that, we have to add a couple things to our game. So firstly, I'm going to name our cube to player. And then in the inspector, I'm going to add a couple of things. So we already have our box collider, but we are going to be jumping the character using Unity's rigid body system. And so we're going to add a component and we're going to call and we're going to add in a rigid body 2D. And so what this does, it enables physics on that game object. And this is for the 2D mode. One setting that I want to change is in the rigid body 2D. I'll go to constraints and I'll press freeze rotation Z. If we don't press this, whenever it jumps, it's going to be adding a force to it and it's going to be causing it to rotate in ways that we don't want it to. So now that we have that component added, let's go back to our script. And then we want to get access to that component. So at the top of the script, we're going to say private rigid body 2D, and I'm just going to call it RB. And then in the awake, we go RB equals get component and then rigid body 2D. So now we have access to our rigid body component. The jump is going to be a little different because I don't want to be reading it on every frame. I just want to read it when it's being triggered. And luckily the input system accounts for that. So in our start function, we are going to tell Unity what function to call when the jump is pressed. So we go to player action controls dot land dot jump and then dot performed. So once it's performed, this is kind of some weird syntax, which you see usually with events. You don't have to worry about it right now. And then we're going to call a jump function that we, we are about to define. So right here, um, it's just we don't want to pass anything into our function. But since this usually returns a flow, if, and if you wanted to get that flow, what you would do is you'd, you'd put in a name for the context. So that's the variable that will get that context from our jump. And then you would pass in that context.read value and then you would pass in that float to your function. But since we don't want to pass anything in, I'm just going to put it as an underscore. And then we want to make a private void jump function that's going to be called when you trigger the jump. So when you jump, you want to check first if you are grounded. So if you're on the ground, then you can jump. If you don't check if you're on the ground, then you can just jump forever and you probably don't want that. So we're going to make another function called is grounded. And we are going to check if it's first grounded. This is going to return a Boolean value. If it's true, then we are going to say rb.addForce. And we are going to add in a new vector2. A vector2 is just an x and a y, so we don't want it any force on the x direction. We just want a force on the y direction. And so we want our jump speed force on the y direction. And then you're going to press comma. And then we want the actual force mode of the add force. So in this case, we just want an impulse force. So Unity provides this force mode 2D 
and we're just gonna say impulse so we want it just once big push at the beginning as if you press dot after force mode 2d we also have a force which is more over time but i just want one big push at the beginning so now we have to make our is grounded function so it's going to be a private bool is grounded So this is going to return a boolean and so we're going to be using a physics function called overlap area to tell if the player is overlapping with the ground and it, if, if it is overlapping then we return true. So that function looks like return physics 2d dot overlap area but there's actually another thing that you can input into it called a layer mask. And so we are going to set up here. We're gonna do serialize field. We're gonna say private layer mask ground. So this layer mask will tell us where our ground is. And so if our two points, which is one of the points is gonna be the top of our character, the other point is gonna be at the bottom of our character. If any area between those two points is overlapping with our layer mask, then return true. So how do we get these points? Well, luckily, our collider will provide us that information. So first we need access to our collider. So up here, we're just gonna say private coll collider2d, and I'm just gonna call it col. And then in our awake, we'll say col equals get component collider2d. And our collider will give us the bounds for our character collider. And so if we go back to is grounded, now we can get our top left point of our collider. So we're gonna say vector two, top left point equals transform dot position. So that's our current position. So our collider will tell us how far away our extents are. So from, our, from the center of our character, if we have basically the radius in other words, of the collider, then we just add that on to the center to see where the top of the collider is. So for our top left point dot x, since we, we want the top left point, we're going to be subtracting since it's going to be lower in value. And then we're going to say col bounds dot extends and then x. For our y, we'll say top left point dot y plus equals col dot bounds dot extends dot y. Now we want a bottom right point, so we're gonna say vector two bottom right equal transform dot position. And then for our bottom right, we're gonna plus equals the col dot bounds dot extends dot x. And I forgot to add dot x right there after bottom right. So bottom right dot y minus equal col dot bounds dot extends dot y. So the reason why this might seem a little complicated is because it is you want to make sure your player is grounded correctly before they jump. And there's more ways to do it, but for this case, to seem the simplest, Unity has their own player controller, which they have a function that provides this for you. But since we're making our own player controller, I thought it would be interesting to show you how to make an is grounded function. All right, so in the physics 2D overlap area, all we have to pass in is the top left point. We pass in the bottom right point. I'm going to rename it. And then I'm going to pass in that layer mask, which I called it ground. So now let's check if this works. So let's minimize it. So first we want to set our ground to use that layer mask. So we're going to press tile map. And in the layer tab here, we're going to press default and then we're going to add a layer. And then I'm going to add a ground layer. And then you click back on that game object and now you have a ground layer, which I will click. Back to our player, we're, we'll set our jump speed to two and then we'll set our ground to ground. Now if we click play, you can see it's jumping very, very small. So let's go to the player. Let's give it maybe a nice five to jump. 
cool. So now we have our jumping, and as you can see, I'm spamming the, the jumping button and it will not jump if it's not on the ground. All right, so that marks the end of this video. It was a little longer than the others, but it's very important and this is the most scripting that we'll have in the tutorial series. The rest will be just very simple. Adding on to this current script, we'll add in animations, we'll make the camera follow the player, we'll handle collision with enemies, and at the end we'll publish the game. So the next video will be having the camera follow the player and then also having the background follow the camera to make sure it doesn't go out of view. So thanks for watching. If you have any comments or suggestions or questions, please comment down below and I will try to respond to them as soon as I can. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed the content, please subscribe to be notified of new content and like the video. Thanks and see you next video.